It's week six. It's a bye week here for Jonathan Crompton and this uh, Coach Mo Dynasty. He is currently the offensive coordinator with Akron. And this is actually year number two uh, with the uh, Crompton experiment in Akron. The first season uh, really struggled. Identical records right now at this point of the season from last year, one and three. Uh, despite last year having a win against a Power 5 opponent, which we do not this season, the offense is just its looking better. Uh, definitely has improved and feel more confident going into this max season. Um, still expect to be a little inconsistent. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're moving the ball a little more, uh, scoring more points, so just feel better about where we are right now uh, than we did this time last season. Uh, this week, we're, you know, obviously no opponent. It's a bye week. Let's go ahead and look at the top stories. Heartstopper NC State couldn't keep the opportunistic Tigers from the upset. As Missouri, with a 35-34 win, they get a, two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to knock off NC State. Big upset there for Missouri. Uh, conference, cl- conference crush. This week's big game matches top 10 Big 12 powers, Oklahoma and Texas. Of course, those teams are moving to the SEC next season. Trojans brace for weekend. Number nine, USC versus number two, Utah. Tops the list of big games this weekend as the Trojans try to to knock the Utes off of their perch. Fight for survival, Arizona State and Air Oregon State. Prepare for war. The Beavers are ranked number 19, Arizona State number 24. Answering the call, Wisconsin keeps it exciting but loses 21 to 14 to number 16, Ohio State in Big Ten play. Clemson edges Virginia. Uh, keeps the power of Clemson Memorial Stadium alive as Clemson now is number five in the country. Off on the right foot, Michigan State takes care of Northwestern in conference opener. And uh, defensive stand, forget winning in Ann Arbor, try scoring a measly point, Purdue. is uh, obviously one of the revamped teams. Uh, interesting uh, little, uh, ad- whatever, uh, adjustments. Uh, as Michigan wins 42 to nothing against Purdue, the Wolverines are right now ranked number eight. As once again, they are moving up towards that uh, college football playoff uh, ranking. As we look at the top 25, number one, of course, still Alabama. They beat Ole Miss last week, 55 to 24. Dominant performance for the Crimson Tide. Utah is number two after, uh, with a 4-0 start. Oklahoma uh, leapfrogs Georgia, moves up to number three from their number five position after a win over Iowa State. Georgia was off. This week they'll play number 22, Tennessee. Clemson beats Virginia. They uh, move up to number six. North Carolina from seven to six. Uh, They were off. Texas moves up to number seven after beating West Virginia in dominant fashion, 45 to 17. Michigan's shutout win over Purdue puts them at number eight. The USC moves to number nine after a crushing Cal, 36-7. Michigan State wins 38-7 to move up to number 10. Arkansas beats Texas A&M, so they are now number 11. NC State, after their loss to Missouri, falls all the way down to number 12. Florida State, another win. They go to overtime, but they beat Wake Forest. So the Seminoles are now number 13. Florida, number 14. They beat Kentucky, rebounding from that loss to Tennessee. Howell State's win over Wisconsin puts them at 15. Iowa edges out Penn State. They are now number 16. They're undefeated. Iowa State loses again, this time to Oklahoma. They fall to number 17. Cincinnati with a win at Old Dominion. They are now at number 18. Oregon State's win over South Florida puts them at number 19. Washington moves up to number 20 after beating UCLA. Baylor to 21. They beat Ball State last week. Tennessee, after their win over Akron, is now number 22. Stanford, over 23, after beating Arizona 42 to 20. Arizona State tumbles down to 24. They lost to Houston 31 to 26. And Notre Dame moves into the top 25 after a huge dominant performance against Virginia Tech, winning 44 to 3. Others receiving votes. Are we in there? No, of course not. Ole Miss falls out of the top 25. But Missouri, after their win over NC State, right outside the top 25. They're number 26, I guess, if you can, you know, whatever. Just go by what you see here. Um, Oregon, Houston, Ole Miss, Pittsburgh, Kansas State, Coastal Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Memphis. No MAC teams anywhere near top 25 right now. Uh, but it was a good week for the MAC, actually, with uh, a little extra time. 
I thought we'd look at this week's results, um, last week's results, and Mac from uh, from Mac teams. They have played some of the big schools. Uh, obviously, our loss to Tennessee only by nine. Miami of Ohio took Miami of Florida into overtime, losing only by three. Uh, Central Michigan got a win over UTSA. Colorado only wins by four against Western Michigan. So some respectable performances here. Eastern Michigan over Florida Atlantic. Buffalo didn't play so well against Texas Tech, but the Bulls are 0-4 right now. Uh, Ohio uh, dropped a game against Southern Miss. Uh, Ball State didn't play so well. Toledo, I mean, 34-21 is not terrible. Auburn might have been a little afraid. Auburn now respects the Mac after last season. Uh, Bowling Green got crushed by Tulane, but Bowling Green might be the worst team in the country. Uh, so, but you know, a few uh, you know impressive results there. Uh, the Colorado game, Colorado and Western Michigan, Miami, Ohio against Miami, and then of course our loss to Tennessee. Some respectable um, showings there by the MAC. Obviously, they would have preferred to have some wins, but it is what it is. Uh, the Heisman watch. Uh, Ja'Shawn uh, Corbett, the running back from Florida State, now leads the list. Keegan Jones from UCLA is second from Cleveland, Tennessee. Interesting. Um, Ch- uh, Tyrion Davis Price from LSU is third. Uh, Blake Corum, the running back from Michigan, fell a little bit. He only had 77 yards and a touchdown this week against Purdue. They probably took him off the field after uh, Purdue started, or Michigan started running away with it. And then Jordan Simmons from uh, Michigan State moves into the Heisman watch to round out the top five. Um, Let's look at players of the week. Uh, Let's just look at all the players of the week from college football so far this season. Uh, I won't like list each one, but give you an idea of of who's been playing well. You can pause it there. Uh, Which, you know, unfortunately with the the revamp mod, some of the, I don't know if the text isn't always clear. Um... (laughs) <laughs> it's hard to read Emmanuel Forbes' name there, but the uh, defender from Mississippi State was the player of the week there, week four, and then that was week five, Detroit Brooks. So we've not had any players of the week uh, nationally. What about in MAC play? Yeah, with a loss last week, Tennessee, we didn't have anybody make that list. Um, week one, we did not play. Bowling Green played. They got crushed, but uh, they were they by virtue of being the only MAC team to play week one, they were the players of the week. Uh, we didn't have anybody week two. Week three, uh, we had a defender win the player of the week. In week four, DJ Irons, the win over Charlotte, his big day. 22 of 28, 351 yards, five touchdowns, 43 yards rushing. Earned him player of the week for week four. Uh, so that is a look at our players of the week. Let's look at some of the statistics. Uh, DJ Irons, as you see here, uh, is eighth nationally in passing yards. Uh, he averages right at, I think, 300 yards a game. See, so they played four games. Yeah, that's so about 302 uh, yards per game. Not, not bad. Let's go ahead and look at his stats so far. Um, yeah, there you go. 102, 159, 1,207 yards, 12 touchdowns. Only the one interception against Clemson. So that's, you know, he's been taking care of the ball much better than last year. 301.7 yards a game, 64% completion percentage. We'll take that, you know, not terrible. Uh, rushing, eh, not great. Obviously, Norrells in four games only has 159 yards. Air, uh, Irons has 121. And then the backup running back, Williams, with only 84. Yes, yeah, so we're only averaging... Uh, what would you say? 60 right at 90 something yards per game rushing as a team. Um, but you know, we've played some very good opponents. Uh, three of our top or three of our four opponents have been power five teams. So the, the reality is it's just going to be harder to run against those defensive fronts. Uh, receiving, uh, Mumfield right now has picked up the slack. Uh, Matheson has been, uh, he's our top receiver, the junior. He's been out for a few weeks. Uh, he got injured in the Clemson game. Uh, but Mumfield has been playing well. Uh, 451 yards, five touchdowns. Grimes, 260 yards. We've distributed the ball pretty well in Matheson's absence. Could be better, and hopefully it will be once we start playing some of our pa- pa- uh, sorry, our MAC opponents. Um we actually have a couple of pancake blocks, but they're from receivers, not linemen, which <laughs> that's, you know, you take what you can get, I guess, but we need our linemen to start being a little more productive uh, in the run game. Uh, instead of passing leaders, what about rushing leaders? Obviously, Norris, nowhere near the top there, only 159 yards. Uh, receiving leaders, Mumfield, seventh, 451 yards, has him ranked seventh nationally um, receiving. Tackle leaders, that's not really us. Sack leaders, interception leaders. <laughs> Powell, or Kelly Powell has one pick. He's the only one. And kicking leaders, Smigel, 
Uh, his longest field goal is a 30 yarder. He is not a good kicker. Um, so, but that is a look at our statistics so far this year. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at recruiting? So our recruiting news this week, the bye week here, we've got, um, it's good news, uh, really. We've got everybody that we are going after, we are either leading for or gaining on the team who is leading. So um, we need to make up some quick ground, though, here on guys like Daryl Gross. Still, you know, we, we added some points to him, but I'm still 800 points off the pace, and the projected cutoff has us out. Um, but as you can see, everybody else we lead on or we're gaining on. Uh, there's another one, Kansas State. This is uh, Garcia, the defensive end. We um, probably need to get above that cutoff line, uh, lock out uh, quickly. Uh, we should be leading for Daniels next week over Kansas State. We do lead for Matt Dukes now. Um, he's one of the guys that we've led on for a while. Might start pulling points away, but he's, uh, you know, he's got a couple visits scheduled. So I'm afraid to pull points off of him right now because I need to hurry up and get him signed. Um, but everybody else you can see we are leading on. We just took the lead on Horner. Uh, Peterson, we lead uh, by 1,500 on him. As you can see, we're opening up some pretty big gaps on some of these guys. I may, I may um, off screen here make some adjustments, but I should, but it, it's good. the news is all good with recruiting, which is you know when you're a one in three team, um, you'll take all the good news you can. And we are only going after three stars right now. I'm pretty sure there might be a uh, two star in there somewhere, but it's um, yeah three star guys, uh, which I feel is realistic. Um, I try to keep my recruiting mostly realistic. I know a lot of guys like to go and try and sign four or five stars with Akron. But the reality is they're not going to get many, if any, at all. I do have one. There's one four-star guy, Shackelford, but I was on his list uh, from the beginning. So, um, hang on. I just I kind of wanted to... I, I don't feel it's, it's incredibly unrealistic for a team like Akron to get one four-star player. Um, but I'm not going to, you know, try to sign a top ten class with Akron. So, um... Which, you know, if you do that, that's fine. You know, you play the game how you want. I go, I kind of go for a sim experience. Uh, but one other thing, I do have five players ready for visits, um, which these are big. It's First of all, I like how it's spread out. It's not like three guys playing one position. You know, I've got a uh, quarterback, a tight end, cornerback, strong safety, and then an athlete. So these are probably going to bring these guys in week seven for the Central Michigan game next week. Don't want to bring them in on a bye week. Um, and then hopefully, you know, get them signed as soon as possible so we can start maxing out points on some of the other guys uh, and hopefully, um, you know, fill our roster with some players who can contribute uh, to this program. So one of the things I thought I would do with the extra time here is look at the, um, the website. It is in the comments. You can go to the website. I'm going to try and keep it current. And uh, this is where the link will take you. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. This, this site is created with a, um, it's an app uh, created by a member of the, off the um, operation sports site named Pocket Scout. And it, uh, it works pretty well. There's some little quirks because of the revamped uh, mods that uh, are a little annoying, but I, you know, what, it, it is what it is for now. But when you come to this page, if you click on current season, this will take you to where, uh, what things look like right now. So it'll take you, uh, first of all, to the statistics page here. This is kind of just the national leaders. Uh, you can see right now, Will Rogers, the junior quarterback from Mississippi State, leads the um, leads quarterbacks in passing. I think they arrange this by yards. So he is the leading uh, leading the nation in yards passing, uh, 1178. Uh, obviously, the Mike Leach offense is um, doing well right now in our dynasty. You see DJ Irons right here. He's got 916 yards. Um, this is before I've updated for the bye week. Um, but uh, that, that's, you know, this is after the, before the Tennessee game, I guess. Because um, at the time I'm recording this video, I have obviously not uploaded the Tennessee game yet. So, uh, but this just gives you an idea of what the site looks like. Um, if you're interested, you can kind of scroll here and see some of the leaders. You can also go to the standings and see where the conference standings are. Um, for example, Florida State right now leading the Atlantic Division with a 2-0 record in the conference play. Um, it also splits it up so you can see divisional play. So Florida State, they've not played a divisional opponent yet. Um, you can go down to the MAC and 
right now, I don't think anybody's, yeah, there's not been any conference games played. The MAG don't, doesn't start uh, conference play until week five, I believe. So nobody's played any games yet in the MAC, but you can still see the team's records. Um, you can see our schedule. You can click on Akron there, and it'll take you to the schedule. And you can see uh, losses to Clemson, Michigan State, but win over Charlotte, 48 to 10. Uh, it also has a little handy little yearly record uh, list here, so you can kind of see going back how, how Akron has played, see the progress of the program. So that is kind of cool. It's got this uh, a menu right here across the top above the schedule, so you can look at career stats. You can see how Irons' stats has gone uh, from, and it, it does it by, uh, well, it doesn't do it by year. I guess it, it, it ranges by statistics. Um, so, for example, Anthony Williams in 2021, um, then it goes to 2022, whatever. Uh, but you also look at stats for this season, uh, DJ Irons, his stats so far, 79 of 120, uh, so forth, so on. Goes all the way down even to the defensive stats, kick, uh, kicking, punting, return stats. Um, you look at the roster, and it'll show you some of the ratings, not all. It does have an exhaustive list of their ratings. But you can see their overall speed, acceleration, and so forth. Um, it has a list of freshmen, so you can see the freshmen for Akron. Obviously, we did not have a big class, a big freshman class this season. Uh, also, you can see the team record book, uh, which I don't think we've had anybody. Uh, I think, well, you know what, last year, I believe, in the season records for passing, we had, we might have set a record, yeah, season uh, 2021, uh, 27 touchdown passes. Did he lead? Yeah, I guess that's the only, the only category he set a record in. Um, but then top team performances. So for each, uh, you know, I think they do this per season where you can see the top performances, Irons, uh, his, uh, yeah, it's got his top statistics there. And what it does, it lists, so this is passing, this top one, the top passing performances. But obviously we've only played three games. So it'll, it'll you know, the top three are the three Irons performances. And then it just throws in some names of guys here. Um, they've not, and clearly they don't have any passing statistics. As we play more games, Irons will start filling these out. But it'll give you the top team performances in each category for each season. So that's kind of a look through um, what you, you know, when you come to the team screens. We already looked at standings. Uh, you can look at awards. Uh, last year, Kenneth Walker was the winner of the Heisman Trophy. And you can, it's got, you know, the list of each award there. Um, standings, we already looked at that. Rankings, you can look at attendance rankings. You can look at bowl games, who's won the bowl games. Um, we can, uh, obviously, we didn't have any bowl games yet. But you can go back to bowl champions, and it'll show you who's won uh, each bowl going back to 2013. Um, as we, I've used a mod to sort of fill uh, fill out those uh, whatever those results, um, which those are from real life from 2020 to 2013. Those are real life results. Uh, Alabama, of course, last year in our dynasty, winning the national championship. Um, you can you can look at national championships. Who's won the most national titles? Uh, conference championships for each conference. Uh, looking at the MAC last year was Central Michigan, and they do look pretty good to have a chance to win it this year. As you can see, Akron nowhere on this list. We're trying to bring Akron its first MAC title in quite a while, I would say. Um, you can look at the polls, BCS rankings. Uh, right now, there is no BCS rankings in our dynasty. I'm assuming that's why it's got Marshall ranked number one. You can go to the coaches poll, though, and it will accurately show you the coaches poll. At this time, Alabama was number one, NC State number two. It has the media poll. Um, Alabama again won Utah two, Georgia, Oklahoma, NC State, such forth, so on. Uh, they just have, does have a record book, so you can see who set the records. Um, and not many national records were set. Nick Saban winning another national title was the only one that's been set over the course of our dynasty so far. You can look at the recruits. You can see jams, busts. Uh, you can see the top recruits, uh, where they are, uh, at least their lists. It doesn't have a way to see um, whether they're committed or not, unfortunately. But you can at least see the rankings. It also has their positional ranking. So that is somewhat helpful. As you can see, Archie Manning right now, uh, right? Ole Miss is his leader uh, with Georgia Houston, uh, not probably not too far behind. It has recruiting rankings. And it even, and I like this, it divides it up recruiting rankings by conference. So you can see uh, how your class is doing against your conference opponents. Uh, for example, in the MAC, obviously I'm not going to, Akron, 
is not going to compare very well against the SEC in recruiting. If you're doing, you know, if you're trying to recruit realistically, as I attempt to. Um, but it's helpful to see how you how you're recruiting against your conference opponents. Uh, and so, obviously, right now we don't have any signings. Most of the teams don't. Only two MAC teams have any signings whatsoever. Um, but as these numbers start to fill out, you can kind of see how you're comparing, which that is pretty helpful. Uh, also has strength of schedule rankings. Uh, you can see how you stack up there. Um, and I think I think it actually does it a couple different ways. Um, not sure. Yeah, okay, so your opponent's winning percentage, maybe? Um, anywho, there's... Uh, probably it's like a third. Yeah, there's three or four ways, and I'm not sure what that number is. <laughs> you know, the average... Your opponent's average rank. So I'm assuming as teams play more games, that'll start to sort of filter out a little bit. Uh, you can even see team ratings. Alabama, I'm not sure how they calculate this because this is not from the game, but Alabama has the highest team rating. Uh, where is Akron? I don't know. We've got to be down near the bottom, I would say. Uh, not terrible. We're at least in double digits. Uh, maybe you can see us. Oh, here we are, 70th. It's a 76 overall. So, you know, that's something that's kind of interesting. You can see team stats, offensive. Um, you know, who's got the most offensive yards right now? Stanford. That's quite the juggernaut offense. We're not going to be anywhere near the top of that, especially having played uh, a couple Power 5 opponents there. But, you know, that can be kind of interesting to see how you stack up there. Then you look at team passing. Uh, obviously, we are 12, so we're a little better uh, in that category. Uh, and then you can go down to rushing and uh, plays per game, which is something else kind of interesting. If you like to run a up-tempo offense, you can kind of see how many plays you are. I try to um, get this realistic as well with my settings, time, uh, quarter length, and all that. You can also see, obviously, team stats defense, which you can go total defense. Then it'll, you know, your, your um, yard, your passing yards. Defense, wow, look at that. Oregon State only giving up 92 passing yards a game. Uh, team defensive uh, rushing yards per game. So it breaks it up into those categories. Uh, it even has rankings for top performances. Who's had the best performances? Uh, passing, Will Rogers had a 475-yard performance. Is Iron, yeah, Irons is game against Charlotte's up here, 351 yards. Uh, that's kind of cool. Top programs. Uh, top programs on the left. And you might not even be able to see. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. Uh, on the right, is, I'm not sure what that is on the right. Hot programs. I guess the team that's hottest. Now this says New Mexico State, but that is actually Coastal Carolina. That's one of the annoying things. Like, it has the right name here, as you can see. Coastal Carolina Chanteliers. But there's something somewhere, and I've not been able to find it to, to correct it. But it, um, it, when the revamp team... Uh, put Coastal Carolina in the game. They had to replace New Mexico State. So there's some similar, like Idaho is actually Appalachian State. Um, Connecticut, I think, is Charlotte. So that's a little annoying, um, but it is what it is. You can see top programs here on the left, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. The teams you'd expect. There's Idaho, right? But it's actually Appalachian State. Um, so uh, that is uh, top programs by conference. You can break it up, look at it by conference, which is, you know, again, kind of cool. That they, they do it that way. Where are where is Akron in the Mac? Well, we're eight. Um, you know, not terrible, but we want to try and you know build our program up and leave as uh, the top program in the Mac. So um, anyway, that's just a look at uh, the uh, web page website that I have put up for this dynasty. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Obviously, you might not um, be too enamored by it uh, going at that in depth but it's there if you want it um, I like I like to do the record keeping because the game doesn't do a great job of that um, so um, let's move on that will be the end of our episode this week as we look ahead to next week we'll be taking on Central Michigan so make sure you tune in for that this is Vol Force 1 signing off <laughs> <laughs>